You get a game. You get a game. Everybody got a game this week. It's not exactly a new car, but you know, keeps us employed. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Tyler Small. Although there might not have been enough luck for the explorers to get a pot of gold, they did get a couple of wins, however. <laughs> You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics Sports Live. <laughs> oh, I didn't know how that... Welcome to Sportsline. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. We saw a lot of games this week, and we'll be catching you up on all of the results. And later, you'll definitely hear us talking about baseball's thriller of a weekend, but we caught up with Tatum Levins to take a deeper look inside their performance. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline top three. Number one. Freshman right-handed pitcher Frank Ellisall picked up Atlantic 10 Conference Rookie of the Week honors for the second time in three weeks on Tuesday following the victory against George Mason on Saturday. Ellisall was previously named first A-10 Rookie of the Week of the season back on March 1st after striking out 11 batters in his collegiate debut against Hofstra. The first Explorers pitcher to have more than 10 strikeouts in a game since 2006, Ellisall now has done it twice in three starts, matching his career high with another 11 strikeout performance on Saturday. The hard-throwing righty picked up his first career win as an explorer in a, a game two of a doubleheader split with George Mason, allowing just two runs and four hits on 98 pitches over six innings pitched. For his efforts, Elsa was also named Philadelphia Baseball Review Pitcher of the Week for the second time. Number two. For the first time in program history, LaSalle women's water polo has cracked the top 25 national rankings. The Explorers check in at the number 24 spot after going 3-2 and two last weekend, including a double overtime upset win over then number 21 Bucknell. The Explorers are slotted right between last week's foe Bucknell at 23 and above a three-way tie for 25th with Iona, St. Francis, and Salem. LaSalle will look to maintain its national spot as it first travels to Villanova for an exhibition game on the 20th and then plays McKendry and Gannon in West Virginia the following day. And number three. After LaSalle's men's water polo team had a second place finish in the MAWPC Championship on Sunday, their recognition continues to roll in for the Explorers. The conference released its weekly awards on Thursday night with senior Cole Strostom being named Player of the Week. LaSalle's number four scored once and tallied two steals and two exclusions earned in the blue and gold semifinal win over George Washington. In the championship game, he tallied two more scores, a steal and a block. In his total line over the two games was three goals, three steals, and a knockout drawn and a block. So it was a lot of pool, a lot of Kirk yeah. action here Definitely. at Tom, or, um, at LaSalle University, I should say. But mm -hmm. Frank Ellisaw, we both got to see him in person. Yeah. He is just on a different world right now. Exactly. And considering the fact that he's just a freshman in his third start and he put in that dominant of a performance, we're going to talk about him in the recaps, but he struck out five of his first seven pitchers. And even when he wasn't striking out, he was still not letting a lot of people on base. His defense really backed him up. So I think we really have a lot to see and look forward to from Absolutely. him. Absolutely. And when we get to the water polos, nationally ranked, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Absolutely. But that's going to do it for top three. Now let's see how our teams did in those recaps. The women's basketball team kicked off the 8-10 tournament with a victory against Duquesne. The Explorers fell behind 11-2 to start the game, but battled back and eventually took the lead before finishing the first quarter. LaSalle didn't look back for the remainder of the half, scoring the first five points of the second quarter and outscoring Duquesne 15-7 after a media stoppage. At the start of the second half, LaSalle came out on fire, extending the lead to 10 points, but allowed Duquesne to get back into the ballgame on different occasions, eventually finding themselves up by four going into the final period. Claire Jacobs came through clutch for the Explorers, hitting a shot with about four minutes left to keep them with the lead. Duquesne would tie the game at 62 before LaSalle rattled off 10 of the final 16 points and went on to win the opening round matchup 72 to 68. Claire Jacobs led the team in scoring, tallying 27 points, and Kayla Sproul totaled a double-double in the victory as well. In the quarterfinals, LaSalle found themselves going up against number one seed Dayton, the Explorers got top early in the ballgame, but a 10-0 run from Dayton would, face a, would force a lead change. 
LaSalle hit consecutive three-pointers to bring the game within four, but after that, they surrendered another 10-0 run and were down big going into the next quarter. The second was more back and forth, trading buckets, but the Explorers couldn't get any stops to take the lead. They went on a 6-0 run at the end of the half and found themselves down 42-37. In the third, another big run from Dayton saw them take the lead eventually, going 13 before the Explorers cut it to 9, entering the fourth. Dayton couldn't miss in the fourth quarter, taking 11 of the first 15 points scored before LaSalle cut the lead to 13. But after a media timeout, Dayton outscored LaSalle 9 to 7 and finished the Explorers in the quarterfinals of the A-10 tournament. LaSalle's season came to an end with an 85-70 loss. Kayla Sproul led the team with 17 points and junior Molly Massiantonio had her best game of the season, scoring 15. Women's water polo opened their 2021 season with a back-to-back -back against number one, 21 ranked Bucknell. Although these ladies had three games, the first match would take not one, but two overtimes to decide a winner. Bucknell began the game with six unanswered. Sophomore Sophia Appler got one back to finish the first. After the score went eight to three, the Explorers outscored the Bison four to one to end the half. Four more from the blue and gold made the score 11 to nine, but Bucknell netted the next three. It would continue this way until the dying seconds of the game, as the Explorers' lead was erased with a game-tying goal with just 40 seconds remaining. They went to extra time, but the Bison scored late once again with just 27 seconds left. However, junior Madalie Corporan found the back of the net with just 10 ticks remaining to force double overtime. Corporan continued where she left off with the strike to start the sixth quarter of play. Senior Madison Martinez piled on with another goal, with under a minute left to play, tied up at 19 all. Then Martinez, with less than five seconds remaining, delivered a shot from the parking lot to find the back of the net and the Explorers won the game as the clock expired with a final score of 20 to 19. There would not be much luck in game two against Bucknell as a close contest went the Bison's way 11 to nine despite a brilliant second game from Martinez with four and senior Sarah, and senior Sarah DeFusco tallied a brace. The third game of the day would be a matchup against the University of Gannon. It seesaw to start as Martinez and Linden gave LaSalle an early advantage. Three minutes into the second, the Explorers gained their largest lead of the game at two, heading into the half. Corporate and sophomore Casey Malone gave the blue and gold a decisive advantage at nine to five, and then the Explorers would coast with the lead for the rest of regulation, winning this one 13 to eight. Then on Sunday, two more matchups at Kirk Poole went down, one against Salem and the other against Mount St. Mary's. And despite an early goal in a seven to two start, for Salem. DeFusco would score the second, but then Salem would just continue to grow that lead to 10 to three. The Explorers would lose this one with a final of 19 to 11, despite DeFusco and Corper finishing with four scores apiece. In the second, second matchup against Mount St. Mary's, however, the blue and gold began on the front foot and did not let up. A total of 10 Explorers got on the score sheet for this match, including the first collegiate goal from freshman Ali Wagner and JC Morris. The Explorers would win this one with a final score of 18-8, putting them above 500 for the first time in program history. The baseball team enjoyed another action-packed weekend at Hank DeVinson Field, starting off with a doubleheader against George Mason on Saturday. The Explorers had their work cut out for them against Patriots pitcher Ryan Stoudemire, who was not only pitching like the rent was due, but also blasted two home runs to put George Mason up 2-0 in the fourth. The Patriots would capitalize on three LaSalle errors to finish the inning up 7-0. The Explorers began their comeback attempt with freshman Will Binder ripping a two-run double down the left field line, but LaSalle found themselves going into the ninth down 10-2. In the bottom of the ninth, sophomore Dylan Maria hit a single to drive home Nick DeVitro, while junior Tatum Levins notched a two-run double, but the comeback fell short and the Explorers dropped the first game 10-5. During their second outing, it was clear that LaSalle was out for revenge. Freshman pitcher Frank Ellisalt dominated the mound, striking out five of the first seven batters he faced. George Mason manufactured a run in the fourth, but the Explorers quickly answered with a solo homer by Tatum Levins to take it to an even game. The Patriots went ahead on a home run of their own, but senior Alphonse Sadala scored Levins on a sacrifice fly to make it two all. It was then sophomore Elijah Dick Dickerson's turn at the plate, where he brought in classmate Connor Coulihan on a two-run home run to put the blue and gold ahead four to two. In the ninth inning, sophomore pitcher Jordan Morales picked up his second save of the season, ensuring the Explorers would get the win and finish this one 4-2. The baseball boys weren't done yet, hosting a doozy of a game against Coppin State on Sunday. An easy first inning saw LaSalle score five, courtesy of runs from Connor Coolahan, Tatum Levins, Ryan Guckin, Nick DeVitro, and Will Binder. 
However, the Eagles would slowly but surely narrow the Explorers' lead with runs in the second and third inning before turning the game on its head, capping off their fourth run fourth inning with a three-run home run to pull ahead 6-5. to five. In the fifth, Elijah Dickerson scored Tatum Levins and Nick DeVitro scored on a throwing error to regain a tight 7-6 lead, but the back and forth continued and LaSalle found themselves headed into the ninth down 10-7. In the dramatic scenario that every kid dreams about in Little League, the bases were loaded for senior Tommy Toll, who capitalized with a two-run single to make it 10-9, before Coolahan drove in binder to tie everything up at 10. The pressure was on for Levens, who promptly knocked a single to center field, scoring toll and securing an 11-10 win for LaSalle. The women's soccer team hosted UMass at McCarthy Stadium on Saturday in what would prove to be a nail-biter of a game. The Explorers found themselves with a scoring opportunity in the 29th minute, but their penalty kick was saved by UMass goalie Alyssa Chase. The teams went into halftime tied at zero, but the Explorers were determined to turn things back around in the second half. Junior Alyssa Van Heerk's 70 minute, 70th minute header hit the crossbar, while senior Amira Lokita's 85th minute shot only found the goalpost. It was looking like it would go into extra time with a score of 0-0, but a UMass free kick followed by a scrum inside the penalty box saw the minute woman net the goal with just 39 seconds to play remaining in this one. It might have been the first loss of the season, but LaSalle still outshot UMass 19-3, while redshirt freshman goalie Jordan Stallard recorded two saves. Men's soccer traveled to go up against UMass for the first A-10 opener of the season. The game went off to a rough start when the Minute men tallied a goal by the 13th minute of the game to put them up over the Explorers 1-0. Just less than seven minutes later, the Blue and Gold clapped back with a goal to tie the game from sophomore Isaac Saden, which was the first goal we've seen from him this season. This goal came with a solid assist from junior Sam Desencio. The Blue and Gold were able to hold the tie with two saves in the second half by junior goalkeeper Brett Werner, first forcing the game to extra time. The Explorers were able to hold a 3-2 shot advantage in extra time but could not find the back of the net. Second overtime saw no shots on goal, but the Explorers were still able to hold up their end on defense, ending the game in a 1-1 draw. Softball's 2021 campaign is officially underway with a three-game series at Towson University. The first of two on Saturday began with LaSalle on top after a four runs in the first frame. A pair scored when junior Kaylee Piven reached on an error, followed by a two RBI knock from Maxie Paxson. Then in the second, the sophomore Victoria Zatko cleared the base with a three RBI triple to take a seven to one lead. The wheels would fell off from here, however, as the rest of the game would be controlled by the Tigers, as they outscored LaSalle 13 to one and won this game 14 to eight. Game two would be a lot of the same for Towson as they won nine to one, freshman Tessa Dodson's solo shot would be the only offense for the blue and gold. Finally, on Sunday, Towson would have their way with the Explorers pitching staff as this one was finished early with a final score of 12 to four. Junior Kaylee Piven, Zacko, and senior Ashley Mendenhall all scored in this one. Field hockey opened up its home schedule with a matchup against St. Joe's. Junior Cassie Kincaid was put to work early in the net as she started the game with three saves before finally allowing a Hawks goal in the 13th minute. Things would go from bad to worse after that, as St. Joe's rattled off three goals in the second period, putting them up four to nothing. The Hawks would pile on their lead with a goal in the third and fourth period to down the Explorers six to nothing. Men's tennis traveled to Villanova to face off against the Wildcats on Sunday. Villanova swept the doubles point, but the singles were, were all LaSalle, as the first set of each of the four top single spots went to the Explorers. Senior Rogelio Gonzalez recorded his first singles victory of the season at the number one spot, while classmate Connor Merrill and Colin Lucius won their first sets at numbers two and number four, respectively. And junior Nassim Fanhiro collected a win at the number three spot. The Wildcats won at the number five and number six spots, but so did Gonzalez to put the score at three to one in favor of Villanova. The home team would notch the last three points and finish this one out with a six to one victory against the Explorers. For the first time since November of 2019, LaSalle has golf to talk about. The men's golf team went back to work when they headed up north to Branchburg, New Jersey to compete at the Peacock Invitational. Senior Ron, Ron Fishang was the best player for the Explorers, finishing 20th while shooting 77 on the course. Junior Matthew Werner and senior David Kim finished tied at 26, shooting a 78 on the course, eight shots over par. Junior Parker Wine tallied a 79, which saw him t finish tied for 36 on the day, and sophomore Carson Rush was LaSalle's last member, shooting 89 at the Invitational. Fairfield's Jason Salamino shot negative one and took home the individual title, while Bryant University took home the team victory, shooting plus 20. 
The Explorers hope for a better outing next time they touch the green when they compete at the Explorer Invitational March 27th at Lulu Country Club. Another deep breath, another <laughs> yeah. long, lengthy recaps that we just did right there. Oh, yeah. And before we get into all the outdoor events, mm -hmm. besides water polo, yeah. we got to finish it off our last time talking about basketball this season. Mm -hmm. And it was quite a run for this Lady Explorers team. Absolutely. The women definitely prove that they are a force to be reckoned with. They made it all the way to the corner finals in the tournament, which is def like definitely something to be proud of for them. Um, a lot of their stars, Jacob, Sproul, Mass Antonio, showed up. So even though they didn't make it as far as we would have liked them to, um, they still did really well, and we can still be really proud of them. Exactly. I mean, you got to shout out Mass Antonio with her career high in the biggest game of the season. Mm -hmm. Kayla Sproul, 17.8 in conference play this year was unbelievable, but Claire Jacobs finishes off a great year, 16.3 points per game, fourth in the Atlantic 10. Mm -hmm. But just looking at that, then we'll go towards one of the many thrilling games we did have that were victorious for the Explorers, this women's lacrosse game. Uh -huh. It was a tale of two halves, and yeah. it was capitalized by Anina Akabuchi just mm -hmm. putting in four goals in the second half. Yeah. She was electric. And the whole team, they fought until the very end of that game. You know, they got the ball every chance they got. They were running hard, running fast. They did not give up until the very last minute of the game, and we were able to see that. And it was amazing to see how well they work together. They have really great team chemistry. So I really think that lacrosse is another team that we can be excited about this season. Absolutely. And another team like that, baseball, getting now back to 500, 6-6 six six on the season. And they've been capitalized once again by their offense. I mean, Ellis Alt's been great. Mm -hmm. So is the rest of the pitching staff and their closer Morales. But mm -hmm. Tatum Levins is really starting to heat up the bat now. All of his hits on the season are for extra bases. Mm -hmm. Nick DeVitro coming in with a 929 OPS. It's just been up and down the lineup. Even when Will Binder was really cleaning out the bottom of the order, very strong for this team. You never know where you're going to get your offense from them. Exactly. Those three games this weekend were a treat to watch for us, definitely. And their offense has been great. Their fielding has been great. I especially want to shout out Connor Coolahan at shortstop. Arguably, that is the hardest position in baseball, but he had that corner controlled. He made some amazing diving catches during that game, too. So with the fielding and the batting really starting to heat up and the fact that this team fights until the very last out of the game, they are definitely going to be dominant this season. Exactly. And you just got to... So we have so much more to talk about, but we got to get to that interview with baseball soon. But absolutely, that is going to do it for recaps today. Yes, so that's it for recaps. But when we come back, Tatum Levins takes us through baseball's big weekend, along with what we can expect for the season going forward. Yo, bro, what's good? What's going on? How you feeling, man? I'm doing good. How you doing? When'd you start smoking? Smoking. It's a jewel, bro. It's a jewel? Yeah. Listen, you might as well be smoking cigarettes. When you start jeweling or vaping, you're four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes. Is that true? That's very true. <laughs> Give me the jewel. You don't need it. To learn more about e-cigarettes, go to thetruth.com. Welcome back. We got the opportunity to sit down with the catcher for the Explorers, Tatum Levins, and he gave us some great insight of not just this weekend's heroics, but the team's hard-fought season so far. Let's take a look. Hello, and welcome back to you on the sidelines. I'm Siobhan Nolan here with catcher Tatum Levins from the baseball team. So obviously, we have to talk about your walk-off single on Sunday. Crazy scenario you found yourself in, bottom of the ninth, two outs, you had a runner in scoring position, what is going through your head when you step up to the plate in that situation? Well, you know, every kid dreams about that type of situation, bottom of the ninth and having the winning run on second base and being able to drive them in. And, you know, at our field, it was getting late in the day. It's Sunday, third game of the weekend. A lot of the guys are tired. And, you know, we had to dig deep in that last inning down by four runs and ultimately try to get a win in the win column because we're hovering around 500 right now. And, Ultimately, we want to get as many wins as we can this season to grow publicity for the baseball team and 
saving LaSalle baseball. And it was huge that we could get that win and that I could help the team. And it's a big stepping stone for the rest of the season and being able to move forward throughout the season. And for your individual performance this weekend was very impressive. Every hit you had was for extra bases, which is pretty excellent. So can you just take us through what your approach at the plate is to put in a performance like that? My approach at the plate is very simple. Uh, I tend to just try to hit the ball where it's pitched and just make hard contact. It gets lost in the game today is swinging, missing. And that's something I ultimately don't really don't want to do when I'm hitting and I want to put the ball into play and make the defenders feel the ball. And if you put the ball in play, good things are going to happen. And if you hit it harder, even better things are going to happen. And that's all I can try to do is just hit the ball hard and hope for the best outcome. Yeah. And, you know, you put in a real shift this week and you were catching, you were hitting, doing everything. Just how tired were you? I mean, I'm, I got <laughs> exhausted just being up in the bleachers, working the camera. So I can't imagine like how you must have felt after all that. You know, a uh, long weekend, especially at the catching position, it takes a toll on your legs. Mm -hmm. And it's really just a testament at my work ethic in the weight room and just trying to stay in best of shape so I can be out in the field as much as possible and help the team. And, you know, going to your catching your defense, you catch for pretty much every pitcher on the team. So what is it like to build relationships with those pitchers, considering they all have very different styles and very different approaches to pitching? So of course, every pitcher is completely different on the mound. Some guys don't think the same way as others do. And one pitcher might be a righty, one pitcher might be a lefty. You have, you have to get to know every single guy on your team and ultimately build a relationship with them. Because as a catcher on the team, every guy has to have trust in me that they can make a specific pitch in a certain situation. And I have to make them feel comfortable and be able to succeed in that situation. So throughout the year, obviously, freshmen coming in, I don't have a good relationship with them just yet building that relationship over the course of the year. And I know this year was hard because we missed the fall, but ultimately just hanging out with the team as best as possible, whether it was Zoom calls over quarantine or just texting with the guys, building that relationship, let alone with the pitchers, but the rest of the whole team is huge in building a team camaraderie and being a success, uh, ultimately a su successful team throughout the, uh, throughout the year. And, you know, that really correlates with my next question is something I noticed during the games is that you have a very vocal dugout after every pitch to your that your pitchers throw every time a batter takes a pitch. You guys are supporting, you're yelling, you're just making it known that you're there for them, you support them. So what does that really loud and unwavering support do for your guys's performance and morale overall? You know, everyone ha has to have each other's back throughout the whole entire season. If somebody is straying away from the ultimate plan of just winning games and being a team player, we have to reel them back in. And having a loud dugout enables the players on the field as well as the pitcher or the hitter in the batter's box to feel like the whole team is behind them with that pitch or with that swing. And if everyone's supporting each other, then ultimately it just makes everyone more comfortable in their situation that they're playing. Mm -hmm. And it's no secret that this team fights hard every single game to the very last out. And you've mounted some really impressive comebacks in that process. So what do you think that determination and that refusal to give up until the game is over say about the team as a whole? I can't say enough about the team and how much we fight and how much we want to win and succeed. All these guys, how much we've been through in the past year, let alone COVID or the team being shut down at the end of the season. We've had a tough past uh, 365 days and ultimately we just have to come together and just fight and that's the last thing we can do is just fight until the end and until that last out in the ninth inning we're going to be fighting until the very end and just trying to get as many wins this year. Mm -hmm. And you know obviously winning is your team's biggest motivator this season but for you personally what is your goal motivation to just keep going this season and finish the season strong? My biggest goal this season is to ultimately just help the pitching staff be as successful as they can because in years past, pitching has really been the detrimental part of this team. And this year, I really wanted to make it my strong point in helping the pitchers be more comfortable out on the mound and getting the most out of them and trying to see them succeed as much as they can. Mm -hmm. And you still have a very full schedule ahead of you, lots oh, yeah. of double headers, you know, just a lot of, of baseball to be played. So what do you think is going to be the most important thing for the team to keep in mind going forward? Most important thing for the team to keep in mind is just 
stay focused during this long time with so many games coming up. I know, I think the coaches were saying we have eight games in six days coming up. You know, that's a, that's a grind for everyone and just staying focused, getting to the weight room and just ultimately staying in shape, eating healthy and staying focused throughout the season will help us reach the main goal. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about baseball on Sportsline, we're always talking about so many different individual names. It just seems like you guys have a really stacked roster. But in your opinion, who is kind of the standouts or the stars or the guys that we as fans of LaSalle baseball can really be excited about? An absolutely huge star this year would be uh, incoming freshman Frank Elsett. Yeah. I know I've seen him get big five pitcher of the week as well as a 10 pitcher of the week multiple times now in the first three weeks of the season. He's an absolutely unbelievable player, and there will be better things to come for him throughout this year. And just lastly, you know, you said it's been a really difficult season for you guys. It's a lot to get through, but, you know, what do you kind of want to say to all of your supporters, your fans, people who are in your corner throughout this entire process? Just don't count us out. Don't count, count us out baseball out just yet because we got some things up our sleeve, and hopefully we'll be successful throughout the rest of the season. Then. Watch out for us. We're coming. Mm -hmm. And obviously, everyone here at Sportsline wishes you guys the best of luck. Um, thank you very much. Thank, yeah, of course. And thank you for joining us and doing this interview. Thank you for having me. And I will send it back to the desk. That just about wraps it up for this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com or check out this week's edition of The Collegian. Also, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash TV and on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send your thoughts and suggestions there. For this week's poll, whose voice can't you stand by the end of this? Siobhan's whiny high voice Whoa. for this deep, very nice voice. Tyler, shut up. <laughs> God. For Tatum and our entire Sportsline team, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Tyler Small. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you at the game.